immunological responses and protein modifications to honeybees to aquaculture structure, aquaculture stressors. And aquaculture is just a technical term for beekeeping. Honeybees are really important both environmentally and economically. So honeybees produce honey, beeswax, and propolis. Propolis is just like bees blue. They're using it in the construction of their honeycomb. All three of these can be found in daily products, um, whether that's hair care, beauty care, or um, nutritious supplements, and that can be seen in our everyday lives. But the majority of the importance of, that comes from honeybees is their pollination services that they provide. They provide an annual $14 billion industry in the U.S. alone. And globally, this contributes to 35% of the world's food supply. Really, really important on a global scale. The way I like to think about it on a more individual scale is if you look at a plate of food, on average, one third of the food on that plate is either a direct or indirect result of the pollination services um, that honeybees provide. So let's take chickens, for example. Chickens obviously have to eat, and their feed is produced in crops that are going to be pollinated by honeybees. Here is an example of a honeybee that's foraging. So the main purpose that honeybees forage is for their own needs. They collect nectar and pollen. Nectar is their main energy source, while pollen provides protein as well as other nutrients. Another, uh, an indirect benefit of foraging is cross-pollination. Cross-pollination is when bees fly from flower to flower, collecting the pollen in something called a pollen basket, which you can see here. And with this pollen, they will be collecting and also distributing pollen with the anther and the stigma from the different flowers. This will help with genetic diversity of flowers, and then um, this is just better for the growth of the flowers. Hopefully I've convinced you that these are really important, so the overarching purpose of my research is to just better understand the health and wellness of these bees so that we can keep them functionally, functioning optimally. Unfortunately, a lot of hives suffer from something called colony collapse disorder, or CCD, there have been reports of CCD since the fall of 2006. What this disorder does is it causes the majority of worker bees to disappear from the hive without any real explanation. Here is an image of a healthy bee, uh, a healthy hive on top, and a hive that has suffered from colony collapse disorder. As you can see, the numbers have dropped significantly, so the hive is not able to carry out the necessary function to keep the hive functioning well. So although there's not a known cause of colony collapse disorder, there are many synergistic effects that play a role in the causation of this disorder. Some of the examples are climate change, migratory beekeeping, monoculture agriculture, pesticides and herbicides, electromagnetic radiation, malnutrition, parasitic mites, and pathogens. Because there are known pathogenic links to CCD, that is what we're focusing on, and we are hopeful that um, in optimally functioning hives, they will be less susceptible to contracting CCD. Therefore, our research is focused on the immunological functions of honeybees. We, these are the honeybees, these are the hives that are on canvas. We use Langstrom hives, which are the most commonly used um, husbandry tactics worldwide. And as you can see, these are wooden boxes that are stackable on top of each other, and within these, are, there are a multitude of frames in which the colonies are able to grow. Now, the setup of the hive is a direct influence on the energy that the bees are conducting. So, depending on how the hive is set up is how much energy they will be using, and we are going to be comparing the different husbandry tactics with a foundation frame or a no foundation frame. The foundation is just a plastic sheet that provides an outline and blueprint for the honeybees to then build their honeycomb off of. So the majority of the time will be spent on actually capping the bit of wax that they produce and filling up those honeycombs, as opposed to a no foundation frame where the majority of the time um, will be spent on producing the actual honeycomb. We know that honey 
comb is actually 20 times more energetically costly for the bee to produce than honey. So there's likely going to be a lot more time necessary for the bees to produce the honeycomb. Um, these tactics are also used differently based on what the beekeepers want to extract. If the beekeeper is wanting to primarily gather honey, they're going to use a foundation frame so the bees are not spending so much time producing that wax. Um, versus beekeepers that want to extract the actual beeswax, the honeycomb, they will use a no foundation frame. But the extraction periods obviously differ based on how quickly the bees are able to produce this. Within these two different husbandry tactics, we also had two different experimental groups for each hive. We tested the basal immunity and then activated immunity. Activated immunity just means that the bees were fed a certain serum that contains lipopolysaccharides, which pretty much is replicating a bacterial infection, although it's not actually harming the bees, but this will just initiate the immune response. Now, the basal immunity bees, the hemolymph was collected initially at time zero, whereas activated immunity was taken after one hour and two hours, as well as the initial Our hemolymph extractions, we were able to collect the honeybees, take them back to the lab, humanely anesthetize them, and then remove the thorax and isolate the abdomen. We were then able to extract the hemolymph, which I like to think of as bee blood. This contains all the necessary proteins and enzymes necessary for the general functions of the bee. After this, on all the samples, we ran colorimetric assays. So we took this hemolymph and we um, entered it into a dilution ser serial dilution, then ran it through a spectrophotometer, which uses lasers, to then look at the different contents and we are able to see just a color change. Here is an example of a plate in practice. As you can see, there are slight variations within the color, but the spectrophotometer was ran at um, 6600 nanometers, so we were able to identify a lot more changes within these uh, plates. These are, the, these are the results of our red 66 assay. Now this is looking at the total protein concentration, overall proteins, not necessarily proteins focused on immune functioning, but just general functioning as well. Here you can see our um, basal immunity against the foundation and no foundation, as well as activated immunity with the colored bars. What these results represent is that the no foundation hive did have a statistically significant higher uh, overall protein content as opposed to a foundation frame. These results were similarly found within the activated immunity and it also showed that the frame type had a higher significance to the amount of time that the bees were active, had the activated immunity. To focus on the specific immune response, we also ran a profenol oxidase assay, PPO, and PPO is a precursor molecule in the melanin synthesis cascade, which attributes to the um, encapsulation, phagocytosis, melanization, wound healing. PPO is one of the most highly conserved um, pathways, as well as the most utilized by all invertebrates, not just the here are our results from our profenol oxidase assay. It again followed a similar biological trend with our foundation, no foundation group of our basal immunity. Although there was not a statistical significance, there was still the trend that no foundation did have a slightly higher um, profenol oxidase activity. Then when looking at our activated immunity, we also found the same trend but time played an important role here. So uh, the more time that went on, the higher the protein, protein activity. Especially after two hours of that no foundation group, you can see the spike in the blue. So that was pretty significant. So overall, our findings highlighted the importance of the no foundation group, the sample group, with overall higher protein levels as well as the higher protein activity, specifically after the two hour time. Now, our next steps in our lab is we will be looking at uh, peroxidase or POX. We're creating a model to then um, utilize the different antimicrobial pathways and under better understand what um, the animal is actually doing within this immune response. And overall, how can our research apply to a bigger picture? So we can look 
and um, educate beekeepers on the importance of the energetic stressors and just bring a general awareness to the no foundation versus foundation, especially for agricultural hives, because these hives have already been known to have a high energetic stress and higher rates of colony collapse disorder. So ensuring that agricultural hives are using that foundation to help support um, the bees and lessen the amount of uh, colony collapse disorder. Also for hives that do have no foundation for the beekeepers that are wanting to extract the beeswax, just making sure that we supplement their health with either a higher, higher concentration of nectar provided, that means more sugar content, or some kind of protein supplementation like pollen patties or things like that to just really ensure that the uh, colony is getting the necessary nutrients to optimally function. I want to say a big thank you to Dr. Stephenson, who unfortunately couldn't be here because he is sick, but he has been a great help throughout um, the research process and the thesis process. I want to say thank you to my uh, lab partner, Matthew, who has been with me for two years and we've worked hard to get where we are. I also want to thank the university for funding the use of the lab and um, being able to keep the colonies on campus has been really helpful and also this thesis program for giving me the opportunity to present my research. Thank you. that there are a lot of different factors that affect whether it's climate change or bacteria or parasites. Do you find that your hives were impacted by several factors while doing this research or was it more limited to a lab environment? So we unfortunately have actually lost hives over the years to parasitic mites um, most recently. Another lab partner, Jared, uh, helped us clean that out. And so we've definitely done a lot of trial and error in this process because there are many contributing factors to colony death. We luckily have not had a colony die for, uh, from colony collapse disorder, but we uh, definitely see the effects of the other outlying sources on our own colonies. They are just past Teresa near the SFS garden. Yeah. Naive question. What why are you using Italian honeybees? Naive is I don't know if there's a Texas honeybee that would <laughs> otherwise be used, but could you talk about that? Um, yeah, so my professor, Dr. Stephenson, has been using Italian bees specifically a lot. Um, mostly because of access. There are, I believe, there's many different species, but Italian honeybees are um, utilized throughout the United States um, for both agriculture purposes and personal beekeeping. So I think access would most likely be that answer. However, he would be a better person since he had started this research about six years ago with those Dr. Gold. <laughs> so I'm trying to, so first of all, the, 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 the foundation, what, is the foundation actually like honeycomb derived from another bee? Like what, what is the foundation that's provided? No, I, so the foundation is actually a piece of plastic. So it's a plastic with an outline of the honeycomb, so it has those uh, hexagonic shapes that the bees are then able to build directly off of. So we've talked about how the plastic foundation, there's generally uh, the same size of hexagon shapes throughout them, but there are still just because of production, manufacturing, whatever, there are slight variations which may impact, um, have an impact on the bees and their like the optimization functioning because they're not able to build the perfect shape that they want, I guess, because they're, they are using that outline. But to answer your question, it is majority, it is plastic in the frames. So the, the idea is then that they're expending so much energy building from the, the wax yes. that they then become susceptible to pathogens. Yes. So but you're not they, actually look, you're not actually look at you're not actually seeing what they have. Like, I mean, you think you have mites and stuff. Is there actually any correlation? Like, 
Have you actually tested that hypothesis? No, we have not directly tested that. We are hypothesizing that that is what's going on based on our results. Of the, and because if you have a higher overall protein concentration, you are likely to be um, more susceptible to pathogens. But no, we have not directly where that's what we're working on with the peroxidase to kind of understand the that POX pathway, the melanin cascade system, and see directly what the proteins are being utilized in response to any pathogens. Um, really simple question, but did you do that artwork? The medium the flower? They did, yes. <laughs> completely confident. I know that there are, um, there's competition between honeybees and other species of bees, like bumblebees or things like that, just based on um, like the amount of flowers and pollen that's available. There is a sense of competition in terms of predation. I don't believe so, but Thank you. 